Ponente Chispoto Influenzoda. Well, I'm Jensen Franklin. I'm pastor of a church called Free Chapel in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, in, a, in the United States of America. And we have multiple campuses in California and all throughout the South, and uh, particularly mainly focused also in the Atlanta area. Yeah, you know, one of the greatest influences um, that we can have on our culture is to have a church that worships. I majored in music in college. I never intended to be a preacher. I um, was in my second year on a full scholarship. I play sax, I play piano and drums, but, but also my main instrument is saxophone. And I was on a full scholarship to play jazz saxophone. I thought I would be a performer. That was my dream was to, was to you know, be, be a jazz musician. I still love jazz to this day and go to a lot of concerts. But music has always had a profound uh, influence on my life. I grew up, I was a preacher's kid, and I played piano for my dad's church. I started singing, started leading in worship. I played drums. Uh, then I learned the saxophone. So worship has always been a major part of my life. And uh, I, think, I think pastors and leaders who understand the importance of worship. One time the Lord spoke to my heart not too long ago, and our worship leader was up leading worship and there were thousands of people there and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me in my heart and said do you know who your worship leader is and I, I thought that inner voice was saying do you know the person standing up there he said the worship leader of this church is you if you don't worship the church won't worship if you don't if you don't have private worship you'll never be powerful in public worship the more private worship you have the more powerful the public worship that you have. So worship is not just something that we do on Sunday when we gather together, but really, if you worship in your car, you worship in your life, you worship in your home, the more private worship you have, the more, the more powerful the public worship. And when a, when a place has public worship that's powerful, it begins to influence people and set them free. I, I thought about the verse of Paul and Silas, when they sang praises, the Bible said the prisoners heard them. And then the next verse says, and every door was open and the chains fell off. In other words, when the saints get loose and start worshiping, the prisoners hear them. And when the saints get loose, the prisoners get loose. People who are bound with chains of addiction and drugs and alcoholism and sin, and the past and failure. Worship breaks the chains and opens every door. I'm still asking myself the, 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 uh, that question of how did I get to know Pastor Cash and Sonia. I, I, he, he contacted me. He said he had watched me on television. And it's amazing to me how that we can be in so many places and never realize, you know, the people that we're having influence on. And so off of watching some of the TV programs, Pastor Cash asked me to come. And, uh, and you know, I'd heard, I'd heard about Pastor Cash and Luna Pastor Luna and, and, and all that the church here is doing. I, I'd heard, I kept hearing your names come up in circles. I travel all over. But honestly, when I, when I came on these grounds and I saw this magnificent, unlike anything personally I've ever seen in the world anywhere, right here in Guatemala City, um, it took my breath away. I'm still astonished. I, I didn't leave the place last night. I didn't leave this church last night till about 1130 because I had to have the grand tour. And I walked around outside and I looked and I said, God, this blows my mind. Look at what you're doing. So truly, this ministry and Pastor uh, Luna and his precious wife and family and this church, the people of this church are breakthrough. You're breakthrough people. And what you're doing here, there are many that are coming behind you that are going to follow and have breakthroughs because you paid a special price. And I, I just honor this house. I am astonished. And I feel like I'm lucky to have a friend, uh, some new friends in Guatemala. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm just thankful for that kingdom connection. Yeah, I, as I mentioned, I was in my second year of college in, in America. I was on a full scholarship on, on the saxophone. And the summer break came. And my brother uh, is an evangelist, was an evangelist. He's gone on to be with the Lord. But um, 
he was an evangelist and he asked me would I go and play my sax and play the piano before he preached in his revivals during the summer, during my summer break. And so I traveled with him that summer. And as I traveled with him, some of those services, God began to get a hold of my heart. I came back after a tour of going with him and I knew God was, God was dealing with me, but I was afraid. The very thing that Pastor Cash talked about in this conference about getting out of your comfort zone and then you have to go through the fear zone. And everything in me said, this makes no sense. I'm a musician. I'm comfortable with music. I can play. I'm, I'm not boasting, but I'm a good, I can play with anybody. I can play in any key. I, I'm a good musician. I know music. And I was comfortable in music. I was not comfortable speaking. I'm very shy, or was very shy. Couldn't speak to people in a, in a group. But God pushed me out of that comfort zone. To make a long story short, I came home and I went on a three-day uh, three fast. I, I felt God say to me, if you will fast and seek me, I'll give you my will for your life. And on the third day of that fast, the Holy Spirit really dealt with me that I was called to preach. And I said, well, I need more than that. I need a confirmation. And I went home. It was about 1230 at night when I got home. And when I got home, my mother was on her knees praying in the bedroom. And when I walked in, she said, Jensen, I saw you coming down the road. And the Lord told me to tell you that He's called you. Obey Him and He'll bless your life. And so that was my confirmation that I needed. And I started and never stopped. Yeah, I think we have to use all of the uh, methods of influence that we can in, in this time that we're living. So we use media very heavily. We have a national program called Kingdom Connection that is broadcast on pretty much every Christian network in the world. And, uh, and then we buy secular airtime in America and in some other nations and uh, internet, Twitter, Facebook, everything we can. I think the church has got to be there. We've got to get in these fields and uh, technology, we use, we use music, we, use, we have a great youth conference that's coming up in a couple of weeks where we'll have about 14,000 teenagers that come from all over the nation. And so, you know, I'm, 50, I'm 52 years old. How I'm still doing youth conferences all over the world baffles my mind. But, you know, the anointing of God, it, it, it bridges generations. Uh, he said, my sheep know my voice. And you know, if, if, you preach, if you preach under the anointing, it doesn't matter if they're 62 or if they're 16. Uh, there's something about the anointing that can help you have influence on generations. And that's what we're believing for and praying for. Well, I want to encourage everyone that's watching Emikasa TV today. I know that God knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. Your greatest days are not behind you. God has a plan for your life and He would say to you today that He loves you and that He cares about you. And Father, in Jesus' name, I speak blessing. I speak success. I speak Your favor. I speak Your forgiveness and Your grace on people watching this today that Your help, Your undergirding power would come in all that they endeavor to do. Bless families, bless marriages, bless homes. Bless teenagers, bless youth, bless businesses, bless the work of our hands, and bless your church and your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.